Hello, colleagues, friends, and students. I'm going to talk about data types in VB.net. And this should help you understanding how to do programs in VB.net. I'm Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD. I'm a professor of computer information technology at Rose State College in Midwest City, near Oklahoma City, in Oklahoma. So let's do that. And this is part one of a video. In part one, I'm going to show talk about data types. There will be no real code in this part. But then in part two, I'm going to do show that how to input data for certain data type. OK? So we'll do it that way. So first of all, what is data? We need to understand that. So data is actually any item or value that we wish computer to process and convert into useful information. Computers do nothing but they process raw, raw data and provide you useful information. Okay. For example, weather data can be processed to produce useful information in terms of warning systems for hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, and so on. So taking the weather data and making the weather prediction to save human lives is one prime example of data processing converting raw data into useful information, okay? These are the examples of data in real life. One is dimension of objects, circle, rectangles, solids, they all have dimensions. These are, so those are some of the examples of the data. Uh, age of living beings, that's another example of data. Name of things, cost of items, tax rates, distances, weather data, dates for events. And one I didn't include here I should have is yes or no to something, true or false. Those are also types of data. Okay. So basically data can be infinite number of things. But in very basic sense, most of it can be typified into few basic types, and then we can process them inside the computer. If it was infinite type, we probably could not use computer to process infinite types. So we re they are reducible to certain fixed number of types, and thus processable. Okay. Okay. So types of data we see in everyday life are classifiable as follows. You have numbers that can be whole numbers or the other type that can contain fractions. Although fractional part sometimes can be zero. So in programming languages, they are called as below. Whole numbers are called integral types. Integral does not mean integer. Integer is a different type. Integral means that they can, integral type is the whole number name in computer science. Computer scientists don't say whole number, they say integral types. Okay. And then the other type that can contain fractions are called floating point type. So integral types and floating point types are computer science names. Okay, so that's all you have to think about. It. But then the other type is text, and text could be single character of a text, or multiple text characters, including zero. So text could be two types. And there are languages that don't treat text as two types. Okay. And then true or false, or yes or no, and the dates. Okay. There could be more, but I think we're just going to kind of limit ourselves to these. Okay. So what are the characteristics that are possessed by all data? All data possess following characteristics. They all have a type. Whether you think about it consciously or not, they all have a type. 
and they all have magnitude. Okay. For data processing, computer has to store both the type and the magnitude. Every raw data has type and magnitude. Okay. And we are going to describe various types divided into subtypes with each subtype classified based on the range of value or magnitude they can cover. Okay. <clears throat> so like integral type has many subtypes, floating point type has many subtypes and subtypes are decided based on how m what maximum value or minimum value they can store. Okay, so there is a magnitude difference in each subtype and magnitude difference uh, changes the number of bytes that are required uh, to store them. Okay, so let's talk about integral types first. Can only be whole or round number. We're talking about general characteristics first. Examples are number of students in the class cannot be 10.5 students. It's either 10, 9, or 11, or, or different whole number. Number of days in certain month. February has 28, January has 31, March has 31, April has 30. Number of months in a year, 12 months, whole number again, round number. Notice that these types have fixed order and in computer science we call them ordinals. Okay, they're fixed order. So what does that mean? That if I say number of students in a class are 19, then I immediately know that 18 precedes 19 and 20 follows 19, and this order is fixed. You can't change it. Okay? That's the meaning of the word ordinal. And this kind of predictive ordinality that we take, think that is trivial, it doesn't really matter. In everyday life, we think that 18 preceding 19 and 20 following 19 is trivial. It has no real value or meaning. But that is extremely important in designing number processing with computers. Okay? This fact that 18 is before 19 and 20 is after 19, this fixed order changes the entire process of doing mathematics with whole numbers in the computer. It's extremely important computer science. Although in daily life we take, we say, okay, so what's the big deal? It is a big deal. In computer science, it's a very, very big deal how mathematics is done with the whole numbers. So this ordinality is a big thing, okay? I won't talk about that in more detail here, but at some point you will learn that in the future. Okay, so vp.net has following integral types and each of below can only contain whole numbers and has upper and lower threshold of storable values. <coughs> byte, and I'm going to go in the order that byte, range of byte will be the smallest one. And the one that will come here at the bottom will be like the highest, uh, largest range of storable values. Okay. S byte, short, U short, integer, U integer, long, U long. That's the last one. We're going to very often use integer type in this class, or most of the time. Uh, U, anytime there's a U in the front, those can only contain positive numbers. They cannot contain negative numbers. And the advantage of that is that all of a sudden you have twice the storable magnitude. So integer will have some minus value, lowest minus value to some positive highest value, if I uh, write a number line. 
but the u integer will have twice the range from 0 to some highest value okay so that's the advantage of u stands for unsigned type okay and you can look up uh, search Microsoft website for vb.net data type and you'll get pretty good uh, re result, results and literature for that. Uh, Microsoft website will be the best website if you want to learn vb.net. Uh, I don't think any other website is better than that. So just search for vb.net or vb2012 uh, and it will have very good description. Uh, if I find a link, I'll post that. Okay, so these are the types. We'll very often we'll use the integer type actually for whole numbers. Floating point types can contain fraction, but at times fractional part can be zero. For example, even though in magnitude the number two and two point zero may look and feel the same, but VB.net will store them differently because two point zero requires a story, a story of this dot and the zero both. Okay, so even if magnitude is the same, storage will be in the RAM will be different. These are not ordinal, they do not have fixed order values. And that changes their entire mathematics. How to do mathematics on floating point changes entirely because they have, don't have fixed order. For example, I would have no idea whether preceding 2.1 is 2.05 or 2.09 or 2.00009. Hey, no fixed order. Again, that looks trivial, but it's very important in designing the mathematics for the numbers, floating point numbers, actually. Okay. Okay, now the VB.net floating point types are these. And these are in the increasing order of storable values lowest here and the highest at the bottom. So you have something called single precision, single, double precision. So this is, this take twice the RAM of this one and the decimal. Okay, so there are three types. And it, it is recommended that for money types you use decimal because this has more precision obviously. But for all other fraction containing numbers type, use the double. Okay, so I recommend this for every non money application and this for money application. That's my recommendation. Text, <coughs> text types are two. <coughs> and vb.net differentiates in type of text that can be just a single character or text that can contain anywhere from zero to multiple characters. Okay. The type CHAR, I call it char, contains or must contain at least one character. Okay. But the string type can contain zero or any number of characters starting from zero to any highest limit. Of course, um, based on the memory available, there is a higher limit, but in practical sense there is a limit, but theoretically you can contain, string type can contain any number of characters. And then Boolean types are, well vb.net is Boolean type and can have only two possible values, true and false. And finally date type, vb.net name is date. And we'll talk about that in future sometime. Okay. All right. I'm going to take simple rectangle program data example. And in this part two of this video, I will show you how to take the input, how to do the computations, and how to print the data. Okay. Imagine that you bought a piece of rectangular land to build a house on. Rectangle will have two dimensions, length and width. So over here, this is rectangle. See, this is a rectangle. <clears throat> and it's your choice whether you want to call 
in this case, of course, we will say height and width. But if it's laying flat on the ground, then we'll talk about length and width. Okay. What are their data types? What are the data type of length and width? Well, you may not always get rectangle whose length and widths are in whole numbers. So really, correct data type for length and width will be double type. Okay, so in vb.net, we will declare two dimensions of the rectangle as follows in the, inside the program. Dim width equal to 0, 0.0. Dim is a keyword used before any variable name is declared. So this is a vb.net word. Width is the variable name. 0, 0.0 is the initial placeholder value. This is not a final value. Okay. And then dim. Dim really is short for short form for dimension. Length equal to 0, 0.0. And value 0, 0.0 on the right side tells uh, vb.net that we wish to choose double data type for the width and high uh, length both. Okay. That we should be width and length. All right. So this is the example of declaration. If you are declaring integer type, you'll say dim whatever equals zero. Okay. In second part of this video, we'll show you how data input is done for various types. I'll have one little program first uh, where I'll just show you how to do the input for uh, in integer, double, etc. Well, actually, I'll show just two. Uh, string type are not very difficult to do. Or maybe I'll show you all three of them. And then I'll do the rectangle program. Uh, and those will be done inside Visual Studio. Okay. So I'm going to end this video right here on data type. And after watching this, hopefully a better idea of what these things are in VB, integer, double, decimal, etc., etc. Okay? Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the future videos. Bye for now.